uh, welcome everyone. Uh, just a quick introduction. So we have today Mr. Neeraj Hatti Singh, who is the MD and the founder at Signet Infotech. And we also have Mr. Jigar Doshi, who is the founding partner at TMSL. Just a very basic and a quick introduction. Let's move to the topic now. So e-invoicing, it is going to be a mandate from 1st of October for all the companies who are having the turnover of 500 crore and plus. This is the talk of the town today. And since we have the subject matter experts, the technical as well as the functional domain experts with us. I'll just take up the quick five most important and discussed questions that we have or that we cater to on daily basis from our prospects as well as our clients. So, sir, majorly we would like to understand from you both whether these will how the e-invoicing is going to impact the businesses today and in addition to this, whether or not is this the tax simplified and how will it, is it going to stop the evasion actually? So, Kesha, first and foremost, it's going to impact the business as it has never impact, been impacted by anything else. So, I would put it across the impact will be more than demonetization. The impact will be much more than the GST rollout. Because if I cannot generate an e invoice in time, it is very clear that my business will stop. And that is the ultimate disruption. If the systems go down, the business is going to stop. If the integrations have not been done well, the business is going to stop. So it is going to be a very, very major impact on the business. And when we talk about the second part, is that is it really going to stop evasion of the taxation? I would be very honest. The 500 crore plus companies are so strong in processes and so strong in their systems implementation and audits. They are the hardly people who are doing evasion. So the challenge is it is kind of a model that we are trying to implement and unless and until it perforates down to the smallest users and maximum to the B2C users for generation of e invoicing, I am not very sure if it's going to help the evasion to that aspect. Government may have a different kind of data for which we may not have the visibility and they would know better. But as far as the type of customers and the clients I know, this is not really going to kind of impact uh, that much in terms of tax evasion. But yes, it's going to be the biggest business disruption. And if the businesses get disrupted, which today only maybe 5 or 10% of the business are ready with invoicing. And if it gets disrupted, it is going to be a loss of revenue for the government. So that is a point I would like to make it. Jigabai, you would like to add something. Yes, sir. So um, uh, you've covered it all, sir. And... Uh... I, I would say uh, uh, probably you know the industrial evolution that we used to uh, study about in our uh, you know uh, uh, curriculum. This is a technology revolution, and uh, till now we have seen uh, you know multiple things happening from hard, hard copy of filing of returns to its ACES portal to a GST uh, portal etc. But now we are seeing actually businesses getting change uh, because of e invoicing. So the way uh, Neera sir is saying that this is going to be a clear disruption is something that uh, one has to remember. But every coin has two sides. This is a disruption. But if someone is picking up it appropriately, this is an enabler also. Because uh, if we chalk out the benefits of e-invoicing to the industry at large, probably two years down the line, when the gamut or the space of people, as Neera sir was saying, the ultimate benefit will come only when the entire ecosystem is covering, uh, you know, uh, within the invoicing parameters. If that really happens, then uh, the number of the, the number of hours that an employee is spending in the AP process, in scanning the invoice, in reconciliations, in uh, processing the invoices for payments, etc., number of hours and num the cost that will be saved is is way too high than one can imagine today. So the real benefit will come after two three years if it is implemented in the uh, true spirit, the way they want to. But right now, the way it is happening, uh, it is giving, being pushed very heavily. I mean, I don't think so. There is any one single company I'm aware about who is not expecting an expectation uh, ex extension. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I've been from 1st of October. Uh, yesterday, I was attending one of the, uh, again, discussion, and uh, there was a debate of whether the extension should be till 1st of December, 1st of um, April, or 1st of June. There was no uh, discussion whether... Uh, there is any extension or not. That is the level of, uh, uh, you know, uh, discussions happening. So that is where I will say the positive impact is coming up in later period. 
but right now the disruption is coming up uh, and that's the definition of impact positive or negative yeah okay great yes so uh, in addition to the points that you have just brought up uh, i would like to understand your comments on to whether or not for each and every business is automation the key for e invoicing or will just a manual upload work i would put it across kesha manual approach forget it and uh, jigabai will be able to expand much more on to it but i will just put across one particular time what is the meaning of a compliance as a layman as a business owner forget i know tax forget i know invoicing forget i know technology as per the law i am supposed to comply to the law of the land that is a very clear requirement that i need to now what it says is that i need to generate a invoice if i am getting a kind of invoice about a company whose turnover is above 500 crore then only i can take a credit of it so these are the two things i need to do now second requirement is till the audits happen and till the government audits happen i am also supposed to keep the records for next 7 years so if i say from post audit another 3 years plus 7 years so around 10 years i am supposed to keep the electronic records of it now to maintain electronic records of what i have filed in gstr1 what i have filed in ev bill what i have filed in e invoice and e invoice portal is going to remove the data after 2 days yeah in one day's time period yeah. now if i have to maintain that record if i do not do automation if i do not integrate my erps to the portals multiple portals if i do not have a checker system in between which is checking what the erp is doing yeah. if that is not put into place and if automation is not done then yes we will create huge amount of new jobs by the manual labor that will get deployed into it but very honestly the only option or the only way this is going to succeed is by automation put aside it benefits of a business put aside that but without automation i do not see any company or any company which is planning to do it manually is going to succeed and i really really would request all cfos please discuss with us if in doubt we will clarify your doubts we will support you in terms of understanding the nuances of this challenge better but automation is the only way and digitization and automation is the only way by which we will be able to be compliant this is a kind of a clear requirement and not only have a maker system a checker system in between is equally important and a checker system which has all the three data coming and flowing into it and providing a reconciliation of it. so that is a kind of a requirement there are so many companies today who are even struggling today to get the e invoice data uh, put into place so that is a kind of a challenge everybody has yes yeah jigabai yes so uh, i i i think this question itself uh, uh, you know uh, brings uh, the blood circulation very high that whether automation would be required or not i think kesha uh, very very obvious as neeraj sir said i will just bifurcate that uh, word automation into two uh, part one is a basic level of integration a robotic process optimization and automation basic level of level one and second is intelligent automation so okay. probably the answer to your question is the basic level of integration and erp talking to uh you know uh, getting the apis and talking to irp and getting the invoicing done there is no brainer the reconciliation automation that is also the need of the r can be pushed some months later but that also is a no brainer that uh, will be required otherwise we are landing up in a zone wherein businesses are not important but compliances and reconciliations are important so people will not be able to focus on businesses and they will focus on handling government notices and scrutiny rightfully so because government is not wrong in issuing notices mindful uh, we should be mindful that if the data is saying this they have to issue notices in fact uh, you know one of the rules says uh, that if the credit is uh, much more than what the liability is they are going to block the credit 86a rule so that rule is there the law is there uh, the uh, the the blocking of credit is happening government is not getting wrong uh, in doing this because they want to intend the the activity to be done seamlessly and auto automation is the only solution that one has to follow 
very true yes just to the question uh, one more question you know to the point that you just uh, highlighted uh, so this question i'd like to take it second which is on the litigation challenges that uh, we might come across but before that what are the challenges that you feel would come because since you know only the 500 crore and above are the companies who are actually going to have it as a mandate from 1st of october so how as i as a buyer will have to face this challenges is what we want to cover first and then definitely on the litigation challenges also we would like to have both of your views first and foremost kesha the biggest myth yeah. and the biggest misconception and i would put it across to every company owner in this country you all are being impacted it is not restricted only to a 500 crore and above company very simply when i made this point in our internal company we as a company are less than 500 crore so as such we are not supposed to go for invoicing but when we had our internal discussion with our purchase with our finance with our accounts team and i said that all of you are impacted and have you prepared for it and the question is how are we impacted that was a kind of a question to us we are not 500 crore so yeah. very simply are you buying from companies who are 500 crore plus the answer was yes i said then you will not be able to take the credit of those invoices unless and until they generate invoice so first go and verify all your vendors who are 500 crore plus who are not 500 crore plus and ensure that from all those vendors you get a invoice so this is a kind of a requirement that each company is going to get impacted whether it's a 500 crore or not and this is a very uh, kind of a easy thing for a understand and we had a very interesting debate on to it internally so a company who is at fault if a invoice is not generated who is at fault in a layman's term if i put it across the first and foremost as i understand correctly and jigar bhai will correct me if i am wrong but for every default for a company above 500 crore so for a every invoice that he does not generate as a invoice he can be liable to a 25000 rupees penalty so that is a kind of a law what it says into it but okay that company is a defaulter but i am a less than 500 company and i am a recipient of those kind of invoice what happens to me i cannot take a credit of it because it is not e invoice i also lose out on to that particular credit and i am also penalized into the entire process because it is being done now that company will go and say i have filed my taxes i have paid my 3b i have paid my uh, gst i have filed my gst r1 i have done everything under the law but he has not issued the e invoice and that is a reason why each of company like ours was buying from a company which is 500 crore and above has to be very vigilant and that is why i'll put it across this impacts everybody this is not restricted only to uh, large companies this is kind of impacting everybody today and this realization is just not there in the industry because i am talking to 10 to 15 industry people on a daily basis and this realization is absolutely not there in the industry yeah dikha the same thing uh, uh, as that is rightly pointed out is going to impact everybody uh, kesha and um, uh, just going little technical the rule is now amended to say that if the invoice the person who is supposed to raise an invoice uh, which is e invoice and is not raising any invoice uh, it will not be uh, treated as a valid invoice okay so as a recipient i will never be able to understand i will have this business as usual i will recover the invoice i will make the payment i will not understand uh, whether this was a legitimate uh credit or not because everything is there i have received the services the uh, uh, or goods i have the grns i have invoices i have delivery challenges i have actually made the payment is appearing in two way everything is there but just one thing is not there e invoice yeah so and the rule is restricting me to claim the credit so that is where government has uh, correctly i will not say smartly or in wrong manner correctly amended the rule to say that it has to be mandated yes there is a big fight happening since 3 and a half years that why the casting liability uh, is shifting from supplier to recipient but that is what government has intended from day one multiple writ petitions have been filed in fact the new rule which has been there which is not yet uh, uh, you know activated or notified says that recipient yeah. and supplier are going to be jointly and severally liable so they are going to say that recipient is liable 
equally if there is any mistakes done by supplier and we have to remember gst is a destination based consumption tax tax so everything moves from supplier to recipients even the responsibility so that is where uh, invoicing would be a important aspect not only from output side but also input side great yes so moving ahead uh, you know on the litigation challenges that you foresee we will uh, like love to understand uh, you know how from a uh, point of view of a company have they to take care of e invoicing i will tell you very honestly kesha yeah and sorry jigaba is a chartered accountant a professional chartered accountant the complexity and the i would put it across not the complexity of the law the law is quite crystal clear but the understanding of the businesses is so low in terms of the challenges that they are facing and they are looking at a limited benefit of saving some cost by not doing automation today or not being 100% compliant they are trying to save some cost into the process and that is going to come in terms of thousands and thousands of notices to them at a later date and people are struggling today when they receive a notice of com- means like uh, reconciling between ewe bill and uh, gstr1 they are struggling because that data is just not available with them so yeah. it's a kind of a absolute misconception in terms of the industry that we will be able to do that and government is very correct even in terms of uh, this particular invoice part yeah. if you generate a invoice and you do not cancel it onto the invoice portal it will automatically move into your gstr1 you go and amend that invoice or delete that invoice over there then it is going to go to the tax officer in a kind of a update that this particular invoice by the supplier has been cancelled or amended he will have that information and he is going to issue a notice and it's going to be automatic notice he doesn't have to do anything just the analytics is going to push this notices so yeah. as a business owners we will keep on replying to this notices and we are not even going into the deeper nuances of the tax or deeper parts of the tax whether the percentage charged is right or wrong or the place of supply challenges are right or wrong we are not even going into that this is pure compliance notice in terms of whether you are compliant or not that notices are going to be so high and that is what is going to affect the businesses so i would really and i would plead to the businesses i would request to the businesses please be aware of it please do not take this initiative lightly because by taking it lightly today you are just increasing your own burden in the coming years and that is something we should not do that so that is a request to the businesses from my side and repeatedly i have been saying that in all possible forums that this is something which needs to be corrected yes jiga bhai sir i'll go little uh, 30 seconds on 30000 feet so kesha uh, data is a new oil data yeah. is electricity and if you don't have a funnel to put the electricity uh, as in the oil and if you don't have a correct tower to put the electricity there will be short circuits and there will be blast so very simply put the data that we are going to give to the government if it is not automated appropriately yeah. it is bound to receive they are, they are bound to receive the notices again i wouldn't say anything is wrong right but what i would say is that 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 that, that kind of litigation or within the litigation umbrella the scrutiny is i would say litigation is basically defined to mean that i am not agreeing to something which government is saying yeah. that is a that's a stage where i am you know already uh, survived all those points of uh, tax positions or reconciliation pre litigation uh, period which is the scrutiny letters the letters of inquiries the audits the assessments that is going to be a big challenge unless correct data is automated otherwise Uh, in nira sir's language we are entering a reconciliation world that is what is going to happen yes kesha yeah just some a uh, last question a quick question to both of you so most of the times the companies and uh, the decision makers are unaware of how to go ahead on the e invoicing piece how do they plan it out so any end comments from both of you uh, you know to help them further on planning it out for the implementation specifically kesha very honestly there are excellent providers available in the market and including one of us we are there to support them help them but 
there are multiple different vendors who have come up with very good solution. They should look, review those solutions and implement it. I would put it across, don't shy away from implementing. Go with a vendor who has a very good track record, who has the capacity to manage high volume data and who has a complete exhaustive system which gives provides all types of reconciliation and provides additional features into it. Go ahead and do that because that is the need of the earth. I would put it across everybody is struggling means I would say there is a single company which says we are very smooth and we are absolutely integrated and able to generate invoices. That's a myth. Every company is struggling because for the first time we are trying to put so many different variety of the invoicing models that we had into a single schema and we have to kind of manage that and come up with a solution, it's not an easy ask or it's a not easy task. I will put it across and that is something which is going to be challenging, but it's a challenge if you execute it well, yeah. if you are kind of aware of how to go about it, it will make it life way, means your life will become much more simpler going forward. And that is a, my request to all my business friends that please implement it well to ease out the pain in the future. That's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, Jigal. Uh, uh, I think, uh, Kesha, again, uh, sorry, I, I'm little in a good mood on a Saturday, probably. That's why I'm I'm saying something. But yeah, again, I'm, I'm uh, I mean, looking at it, the story of share aya, share aya. So, mm. you know, we all used to talk about technology revolution, aega, 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 and never it came. <laughs> Invoicing has come now and share aa gaya hai. So, might as yeah. well we wake up, we select the correct path of automation, make a project plan, appoint a project manager, don't worry about the timelines. First October, first December, whether government is pushing it, not pushing it, let's not focus there. Don't focus on cost for that matter for stage, stage one. First, yeah. make a plan appropriately. See where all you are getting impact, impacted as a company, where all automation can come into picture. Then decide what all is priority one and what all is priority two. Make a plan A and plan B and start working towards it. Trust me, the experience with Neeraji and with uh, all of us together when we are working with our clients is not a Herculean task. Uh, it is just yeah. looking at a big uh, mountain. But if you start climbing, you are going to be on peak of it very soon. Uh, and, and that's what I would recommend that start sitting on it, work upon it. Don't worry about timelines. Everything will happen appropriately. Even if you're delayed by three months, manually you can do for three months with the hope that in three months automation will come in for good in your life, in your company. So that is the way I will always recommend companies to start working towards it. Majority have started if you really ask me, but yeah. still there is a lack of uh, trust factor internally and as well as with the government. So we have to realize that it has to be looked up in appropriate fashion and move towards this automation journey uh, through invoicing. And we should thank uh, the the Indian government that they are pushing it so hard that automation has is actually coming into us without we, uh, you know, really, really wanting it during the COVID times. But still it is coming on and, and it's going to be benefiting us, all of us. In two years time, same session, we will have again Kesha and Neeraji and we will be saying, yes, it was a wonderful uh, time uh, for the organization now. Yes, definitely. And it's going to like the vehicle movement will become so fast because now people will be able to on a click of a button or a scan of a QR code, able to verify the authenticity of the invoice and then you don't need to bother anything. Yeah. So, so many benefits are going to come out of it. But for that, that short term pain really needs to take be taken. And yes, share aya, share aya is the absolutely, I would say, right uh, kind of uh, comment on to it because share aa raha hai ya share samne ab dikh gaya hai and it is rather sooner than later we wake up on to it so that is all and thank you so much kesha thanks uh, so much yeah. for this session yeah thank you both of you and uh, hopefully we will have uh, other sessions such sessions wherein we can take up more such questions from the industry sure thank, thank you lot sir thank you thank you, lot, thank you. Thank you. Bye.